Welcome to IELTS Success Summit. And in this video, we're going to look at the reading section and how to do sentence completion questions. And just to begin with, I want to just give you a few key tips to be aware of as we go through this session and that we're going to point out as we discuss the strategy for sentence completion questions. First of all, it's always important to read the instructions and the, reading the instructions always helps us to get a higher score and makes it clear that we are completing the task that we're asked to complete. These questions usually come in order through the passage. So once you've answered a question, you'll keep going through the passage to find the answers to the following questions. It's important also to keep in mind that when it comes to sentence completion, you always want to make sure that as you complete the questions, they are grammatically correct. And that can be a good clue to making sure you've chosen the correct ending for the sentence. One of the key clues that is often helpful in sentence completion questions is looking at the specific uh, word type that you need. Do you need a noun? Do you need a verb to continue the sentence? And as is often the case in the reading section, knowing about synonyms and paraphrasing is so important. So before we just get into the strategy of sentence completion, let's talk about synonyms and paraphrasing, just to give you an extra little tip and some extra help when it comes to sentence completion. Remember that synonyms are words that mean exactly or nearly the same as the words that you've identified in your question. So, for example, if you see a word like changing in the questions, when you go to the text and you skim the passage and you're looking for key words, you may find a word like modifying. So it's very important just to be aware of synonyms because you won't always find the, the exact same word in the passage as you find in the questions. And the same with paraphrasing. Paraphrases are just groups of words and a way of saying the same thing in a different way, using synonyms or even a different structure. For example, you might have a sentence like, the new restaurant was small and cozy and had excellent food. And this, a paraphrase of this sentence could be, as well as an intimate atmosphere, the new restaurant served superb dishes. So you're replacing a phrase like small and cozy with intimate atmosphere and you're replacing excellent food with something like superb dishes. So this is just a really quick uh, reminder of how synonyms and phrases, paraphrases work in the reading section and just a little tip for something to be aware of. So let's start with the strategy for sentence completion. So remember, we always start with the questions before we look at the passage, because by looking at the questions first and identifying the key words, it will help us when we go to skim the passage for the first time, because we'll, always, we'll already be a little bit familiar with the passage, and it won't even seem like we're looking at it for the first time. And instructions can be very important. They can make the difference in your band score overall throughout the IELTS exam if you really pay careful attention to the instructions. And I've seen students who have not always paid careful attention to the instructions have a lower band score just uh, because they didn't follow the instructions because task completion is a key element of the IELTS exam. So just by paying attention to the instructions throughout the exam, 
you could see an increase in your band score by a half or a full point overall. And when it comes to sentence completion, there's a couple of things that you'll notice that are important in these instructions. And that is that you can choose no more than two words, and these words come from the text. So you're going to be choosing actual words from the text, which means you're not going to have any problems with spelling. You just have to make sure that you uh, uh, copy these words directly from the text, and you're not going to have a vocabulary problem here because these words are given to you from the passage. So uh, just another tip, make sure you always underline the instructions, not only to be clear on what your task is, but to also make sure that when you're halfway through a set of questions, you're not second guessing yourself as to whether or not you are completing the questions properly. So make sure and in this case, no more than two words. You can use one or two words. And these are exact words from the text. So the first thing we're going to do is read the questions and mark keywords. And if you need a reminder and a, a, a more in-depth lesson about the keyword strategy for the IELTS exam, you can find a, a, the video in my, on my YouTube channel and don't hesitate to subscribe to the YouTube channel for, for previous lessons on the reading section and other sections of the IELTS exam and to be notified when future lessons are added. So as we go through these questions, we're going to mark some keywords. So remember, names, proper names of places and people and are always very important and one of the easiest ways to identify the key information that you need. And in this case, we want to identify uh, adjectives and nouns, dance types, and changing the position. Uh, in the next uh, Next one, we're going to use adverbs as a key, uh, a key word. They dance where? Outside. So an adverb is very important. You're not interested for every place that they dance. You're interested in when they dance outside and in the direction of something. And the angle of the dance. So we can already see that somehow this passage is going to be about some kind of dance. And so we want to recognize the different possibilities when it comes to dance, dancing outside, the angle of the dance. And then we're also going to see a comparison here, the angle of the dance and the angle of the food. But there are some other clues here that are very important. And if you remember from what I said at the beginning, we want to know what kind of, what type of word are we looking for? So when we see uh, the article the in front of an empty space, we know that we're going to be putting in a noun or an adjective in a noun if we're using two words. So this is a really good clue so we want to look and see if there's an article before the gap that we have to fill in. And in this case, we know we're going to be using, we're going to be looking for nouns and, and adjectives that may go with that nouns if we're going to have more than one word. So after we've looked at the questions, then we come to skimming the passage. And I'm just showing a portion of the text here. But remember, when you go to skim the passage, you skim the entire passage in one shot. All at once, you want to skim the whole passage. And skimming, uh, again, it means 
to look at every word and read every word as quickly as possible and underline and mark the key words because anytime you come back to the passage after your initial skimming of the text you're only going to be scanning and looking for key information that you've already identified as being important and again we want to just be aware of synonyms and paraphrases that may help us the the words that we choose will be exact words from the text for to fill in the gaps but they may be uh, located within uh, paraphrases or synonyms of what we've identified in the questions so again we want to always underline proper names von Fritt, uh, the scent of the food uh, we know that we're looking for uh, different dance types so maybe the third dance remember we had a key key word in our questions that referred to the direction so we're going to be looking for words that have to do with direction and we see uh, away from the hive we know that we had uh, something in our questions about uh, changing the location so we have moving the feeding dish and we're talking we also know that we had something about changing and so uh, we can underline uh, started changing and again that second type of dance is helping us with the types of dance that we may be looking for now just one thing another little tip that i always like to add in when it comes to skimming is to remember we don't want to mark too much and we don't want to mark too little if we mark too many words we won't find what we're looking for if we mark too few words we also won't find what we're looking for so with practice you will find a good balance between marking too many or too few and you'll find what works best for you so once we've skimmed the passage now we're going to look for the words that we can put in here that will uh, give us the correct answer so we we know we're in the right place if we had been uh, scanning the whole passage after after looking at the key words that we marked the name von frisch is obviously very important so we know we're in the right section where it says von frisch and we're looking between uh, the difference between dance types and it says these uh, dance types uh, the difference between these dance, dance types was discovered by changing the position of something. So one of the uh, synonyms we have for changing is the word moving. Moving something. And we see that it's moving the feeding dish. So there's our answer. We want, we can use one or two words. So we're going to put in feeding dish. And these are the exact words from the text as the instructions told us. And we're only using two words. So the feeding dish fits our answer to this question. Now we want to look at the question. So what we've done is we've, we're looking at a different portion of the text. Again, just a portion. But remember, we've skimmed the whole text. And now we're looking at this passage. And we've underlined some key words on the inner wall. Uh, and again, uh, we've underlined von Frisch. And we're talking about direction of the food and inside the hive the direction of the sun against the hive wall and feeding place and direction of the sun again we're using all the similar words that we found and marked in the questions anytime we see a number we're going to mark that 
It may not be necessary for this question, but remember, after these four questions, we still have 10 more, nine or 10 more questions to go. So remember when we skim the passage and we use that keyword strategy, we're also, we're not only identifying words that are similar to the first set of questions that we looked at, but we're going to use mark words that will come in useful for all the other questions we'll have for this test. So we say they dance outside the hive and it points in the direction of something. Now, initially, we see something inside the hive. So we're not interested in the dance that's inside the hive. So we're not really going to Okay, we're looking for something that refers to outside of the hive. And when we do this, the answer we're going to come up with is food. Okay, so the direction of the food is uh, when we're outside, okay, uh, outside the hive, the dance uh, points to the direction of the food. And in this case, we're only using a one word answer. Remember, we can use one or two words. Okay, let's move on to the next question. And again, oh, this time we're going to find the answer in the same uh, portion of text. And we're talking about angle of dance and angle of the food. And we don't really see the word angle in this uh, portion, but we do see 40 degrees to the left. Uh, and this suggests that it's describing an angle. So the angle of the dance from the vertical shows the angle of the food from, and we're looking at what is mentioned most when it comes to these angles. And we see relation to the sun, of the sun, same direction as the sun. And this is repeated throughout this portion of the text. And that's going to give us a really good clue for the answer. And so our answer is the sun. Okay. I hope that you can see that as well as having individual keywords, if we see rep uh, repeated words and we can, we can uh, this suggests to us that these words are probably very important in answering a question. So the angle that is referred to throughout this portion is in relation to the sun. So I hope that you found this helpful and there will be more videos that you can find on the YouTube channel about different sections of different question types in the reading section. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and be notified when, notified when, few, when new answers arrive. And I wish you all the best on your journey as you continue to prepare for the IELTS exam.